Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, is that you? Expecting anybody else? You're home early. Is that all you have to say? No, but are you all right? Fine. It's not so early. Isn't it? It's ten minutes after six. Are you sure? I thought it was about four o'clock. Well, here's my watch. Look at it if you don't believe me. David, I've lost two hours someplace. Probably someplace in the kitchen. You look nice. Well, don't sound so surprised about it. Mm, smells good, too. Like it? New kind of soap I bought. I mean from the kitchen. I might have known I play second fiddle to the stove. Only at dinner time, darling. It'll taste even better. What's on the stove, I mean? How do you know? I sampled. It's two kinds of soup. What'd you say? You heard me. Two kinds of soup. That's what I thought you said. By mistake, I got two different kinds, and I was too busy to go back, so I combined. You'll like it much better than separately. If you say so. Now, look, you've got to hurry, darling. Here, I'll hang up your coat. Mom will be coming in a few minutes, and I'd like you to be ready at the same time as the chicken. I shall pluck my beard, baste myself in the shower, season myself with aftershave lotion, and come out perfectly done, ready to serve with the chicken. <laughs> I've got some extra parsley for your buttonhole. Excellent. I look lovely in parsley. Anything I can do to help? Not a thing. Mm, you certainly cleaned up today. I bet Tucker never saw his living room shining like this. Bertha, help me. She's absolutely unique when it comes to dust, David. Doesn't it even allow it under the carpet or in a corner where it doesn't even show? The trouble with you is that you were born with a horseshoe in your mouth. Me? Don't look so innocent. You know what I mean. I haven't got the slightest idea what you mean. We move into a sublet apartment. And inside of 24 hours, the superintendent's wife has taken you under her motherly wing, and presto, you are spared all the problems of a newly married bride. Lucky, aren't we? I'm not so sure. Why not? Someday, you're not going to find any Bertha. Then what? Who's that? My horseshoe. Coming, Bertha. You get that wash, darling. Coming, 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 coming. Hello, Mrs. Norton. I'm a little late. No, no, you're not. Mr. Norton's just gone into the shower. Ah, good. Here's the filling for the salmon, Moosery. <gasps> Come in the kitchen, Bertha. I can put it right on the platter, and I'll give you back your plate. It's all right. No hurry. Oh, I better. If I don't give it to you now, I may never. <laughs> Mr. Tucker left such an assortment of plates, I'm sure yours will find a mate. Ah, oh, you have made the dining table look beautiful, Mrs. Norton. If I say so myself, I did. Bertha? Yes? Tell me, do you work forks in from the outside or out from the inside? What is it? You see, I've got three forks for each of us. Fish, meat, and dessert. Yeah. Well, we eat the fish first, then the chicken, then the dessert. Yeah. But I can't remember whether the forks read left to right or right to left. I don't know. I only use one fork. So do we, but everything else is going to be so perfect tonight. I, I want it to be stylish with forks, too. Well, your mama will know herself which fork to use and, and when. Now, here's the filling. <gasps> oh, it looks gorgeous and smells wonderful. Have a little taste. Go on. Don't mind if I do. Mmm. What's in it besides onions? A little celery, cucumber, watercress, hard-boiled egg, chives, sour cream. Don't tell me anymore. You like it? I love it. Only it's going to make my chicken look awfully pale. I bet you 20 cents they will forget all about the moose when they see your chicken. Say, I put it in the oven exactly uh, 57 minutes ago. Would you look at it for me, Bertha? Mm-hmm. Oh, it looks like a picture. Does? Just the chicken should look. But I baked it a little so it shouldn't dry. Oh, I, ho I hope it isn't. Oh, it won't be. You put one onion inside? Don't tell anybody, but I, I slipped in, too. Then it will be twice so good. <laughs> I go now. I find my way out myself. You're busy. Have a nice party, Mrs. Norton. We will. It's my first dinner for Mom. It's quite an occasion. And, Bertha, thanks again for making the mousse. Oh, don't mention it. 
Good night, Mrs. Norton. Good night, Bertha. Hey, David, are you almost ready? I'm out of the shower. Mm, you're fast tonight. I can't play a host in my bathrobe. Isn't it being done this year? Only in the second best of households. We're the best. Give me a kiss. With pleasure. Thank you. Bye now. Bye now. Where are you going? Slave over a hot stove again. Darling, if everything isn't just right tonight, Mom and I will love you just as much. I know, but everything is going to be just right tonight. Oh, then, Mom and all. Say, we ought to give her a key, you know? We will. Now, Mommy, you're going to get a key. A what? A key. No, no, go inside and sit down like a lady. Dinner will be announced in due time. Don't you need any help? I do not. What are we having? None of your business. Can't you wait and see? You never waited to see in my house. Mama, are you lonesome? Lonesome? I should say not. I'm catching my breath for the first time in years. What good is catching your breath? Try it sometime and see. Where's David? Catching his in the shower. I'm all through here. Let's sit down a minute inside. And, oh, please uh, look the other way when you go through the dining room. What am I not supposed to see? The table. It looks lovely. Then why can't I see it? You will later. Oh, I forgot something. I- I'll be with you in a minute. What now? To turn out the light in the kitchen. You're a changed woman. That's all I can say. What do you mean? For 18 years, I've been following you around, switching off switches after you. And now, one week under your own roof... Mr. Tucker's roof, please. One week with your own lights and an impending light bill, and off goes the light. I'm economizing. On light? On general principles. Now sit down, Mama, in the deep chair here. Mm, sit there yourself. I like a straight chair better. You're the most stubborn woman. Say, do you know you're not looking badly at all? Thanks. What'd you do all day? Between your eight phone calls, one errand for you, one threatened visit from you, I just sat and waited for something to happen about you. Well, you won't have to wait long. We'll eat soon. Say, how do you like dining with your married daughter? I haven't dined yet. I'll let you know later. (laughs) Hello, Mother. Hello, David. She's criticizing the dinner already, David, before she even eats it. Pay no attention to her, darling. Listen, you two. I didn't come way over here to have you talk about me in front of my back. (laughs) Turn around, then. (laughs) Claudia, I think something's burning. Is it? Could it be my chicken? I can't smell it. Breathe up. I'd better go and look. It's a shame to frighten her about her chicken, Mother, but it's the only way we'd get a word alone. She's certainly in heaven tonight. Why not? This apartment's working out just right. She looks fine. She is fine, Mother. Do you miss her? Sure I do, but that's the way it should be. Actually, though, she hasn't allowed me much time to miss her. You know, the minute I met you, I decided to marry Claudia. Nothing's burning at all. It must be the people upstairs. Move over, David. Claudia, I just had these pants pressed. I'll put a a new crease in them for you. There are enough chairs to go round, aren't there? That's not what chairs are for. You and Mom are ready to eat? Of course we're ready. Don't want to make a little more small talk? What are you trying to do? Wait until we're half unconscious with hunger? Oh, not a bad idea. Are you sure you don't want any help? Why do you keep insisting on that? Are you trying to wreck my ego? Don't wreck her ego, Mother. When my wife goes in the kitchen... She gets creative. She gets sloppy. Same thing. (laughs) Hey, what do you mean I get sloppy? I will invite you all for a free inspection. Afterwards, Mother, when we wash the dishes. It's as neat as a pin right now. Well, now that we've run out of small talk all about me. In front of your back. Let's eat. Hooray. Now, you and Mama sit down like company and I'll bring things in. Your arm, Mrs. Brown. With pleasure, Mr. Norton. Hey, what about me? My other arm, Mrs. Norton. No, I don't think so. Both arms or no arms at all. Then you're out of luck. Oh, the table does look lovely. I think so, too. You did this with Tucker's leftovers? I had to make do. We haven't got our wedding presents yet. Now, now you sit down there, Mama, and, and David at the head of the table. I'll be right back in. What's that centerpiece made of, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. It looks like Christmas tree jangles. It is. Well, Merry Christmas, David. Same to you, Mother. Same to you what, David? Merry Christmas. Oh, those. I found them on the shelf of the coat closet. I guess Mr. Tucker likes Christmas trees. Well, here's the first course. And it looks very handsome. What is it? What does it look like to you? I'm very suspicious. So am I. It's pink and very pretty, and it looks vaguely familiar. Claudia, isn't this the salmon you introduced me to two days ago? I don't know, is it? I'll tell you right away, David. Oh, Mama, take some more. That's enough to start with. You'll be sorry. David, help yourself. After you, dear. No, 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 you go ahead. 
It is the salmon, David, but you'd hardly recognize it. Go on, have a taste. Don't look so dubious, it won't kill you. Sure. This is good. Mm. You know, I wouldn't know how to begin to make this. You really like it? I mm. repeat, it doesn't taste like salmon at all. That's the point. Now, now what do you think of your daughter, Mother? I'm speechless. It's as good as a caterer. You must have taught her, David. She was never like this at home. Your fault. You didn't give her a chance. Claudia, tell me, what's in this dress? Everything but the kitchen sink. That's right, darling. Don't give away your secrets. It's kind of rich, though, isn't it? Oh, it's just fish and things. Mostly things. Very good things. I think I'm quite smart, don't you? Very smart. You go to the head of the class. Mm, you like me to be very smart, don't you? I love it. You wouldn't like it if I weren't, would you? Mm, I'd hate it. Well, I'll tell you something then. What? You really want to hear? Go on, go on. I didn't make it. You didn't make it? Nope. Surprise. Well, who did make it? Bertha made it. And and you've been sitting there letting us heap compliments on you. Yep. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Claudia, you're a nice girl, darling. Am I, David? I think so. Very nice indeed. Don't fool yourself. I'm not so nice. I just haven't got the courage to tell you a fib. Anyway, you'd find out just by looking at me. <laughs> I don't think that's the reason. Oh, maybe not. I guess it's because you'd believe me, David, no matter what I'd say. You bet I would. But the chicken's mine. And it smells wonderful. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. the refreshment committee for your club's next social? It's an easier job now that Coke is more plentiful. You know, the pog that refreshes with ice-cold Coke is always sure to please everybody. So stop by and tell your grocer you'll be needing Coca-Cola for the big meeting. He'll be glad to supply you. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. <laughs>